if you are selling online, quarter four, that Christmas period, is always the peak selling time of the year. And Etsy has been growing year on year since forever. Every year it's doing a little bit better. And every year, quarter four is by far the biggest selling period. So we want to know what the trends are going to be for Christmas so we know what the things that are more likely to sell are. So this is my selling arts and crafts online. This is taken from the Etsy style guide, E-Ranks trend buzz, ads on Facebook, what's trending on Pinterest and Amazon, and even what celebrities are up to. Remember, like I always say with these trend guides, in general, you're not looking to jump from trend to trend to trend to give up all your items that are doing well. These might just give you ideas of little tweaks, little visual differences you can make, or slightly different ranges if things fit in with the things that you're making. It can even help you give some ideas of how to style your photographs for Christmas. Now looking at the Etsy stats, what they told us, in 2020 shoppers spent nearly 120% more than they did in 2019. And that was $3.3 million in the Christmas period. And in the past couple of years, internationally Etsy has been growing massively as well. And with the global situation still unfortunately uncertain and a large number of new people having learnt how to shop online, I predict that Christmas online is still going to be big. But remember, it's not just Christmas. Quarter four has plenty of other holidays and gift giving events going on. Those important sales dates include Halloween, Thanksgiving, Dalwali and the winter solstice. Do, did I say that right? Oh, it's, it's a long day. So let's dig into those feels, those trends, those up and coming things and those things that are the same for every Christmas period. The first big trend is back to work. This is not just going back to work. For all those people who've been working from home, quite a lot are being encouraged to go back into the office, but quite a few are still staying at home. This also impacts everything. But we're also talking about students going to dorm rooms for perhaps the first time ever and schools going back. So people are wanting to personalise their space, reduce anxiety and have a bit of creative fun and show some personality, especially still in those Zoom meetings. Obviously, wall decor, your background, is super important for most people. Neon signs are huge. But in a contradiction, you've got neon, you've also got earth tones. And tapestry has seen a real upkick in search results. And this is not what I consider tapestries. When you search on Etsy, tapestry must mean something different because it's being seen as a kind of cheap way to decorate a dorm room. You know, back in the day when we had posters, now it's tapestries. And those macrame plant holder things are still huge. Top dressing is now a recognised term, which I don't want to show you, but I have a top on. I'm wearing my pyjamas on this bottom half. And that is a common thing. People are buying fancy tops and comfortable trousers, putting decoration on, putting makeup on, and not really caring if they're wearing giant fluffy slippers. So, in, so instead of the party at the back, business at the front hairstyle, we're talking about business on the top, bed on the bottom <laughs> type clothing. And I think we can guess bold jewellery is still a trend. At Christmas time, people like a bit more luxury anyway. But if you're only being seen in a Zoom meeting or if you're in gatherings that are a little more social distanced, we're not looking at those tiny, delicate pieces of jewellery. You want a statement piece that smacks in your face. Wall planners are picking up popularity and for the end of the year, you know, for gifts, for people, for January, wall planners are always going to be popular. And this kind of planner thing has been a trend for a few years now and is likely to stay more so. And in the same vein, journals are always popular and all the accessories that go with them for back to school, for back to the office, for to university, all the colourful accents, washi tape and stickers, colourful pens, rulers, anything with a little bit of personality that can be sneaked into your pencil box. Big trend in the UK just now is for artisan keycaps. This is often things like resin poured, things you can replace your keys on your computer, maybe resin filled with beautiful flowers or rainbow colours. 
really pretty and it dresses up your computer. And in Facebook Marketplace, the top searches are for furniture. So this is talking offices, work from home, school from home, still looking for furniture to dress up that space. In fact, the trend isn't over. I'm hearing from a lot of people that were temporarily working from home, whose offices, whose businesses have now decided to close their office so everybody's working from home, and they now get an allowance to buy office furniture to do up their room. And for the school kids, and well, adults, but the school kids, massively popular thing is fidget toys. This is not the fidget spinner of a few years ago, but it's like anxiety relief toys, the ones I'm loving the look of are like giant plastic bubble wrap where you pop, you pop the bits in one way and pop them the other way. It's just sort of mindless calming things or little toys in the palm of your hand that you just kind of fidget with. They have been really picking up over the year and so as Christmas gifts they're gonna be huge. The second section is gonna be getting together, those weddings, parties and clubbing now. That is becoming big as people are returning to clubs. Cutouts are still big, as are sparkles. Let's face it, if you're going to the office party, have a bit of a shine. And think about it, you can even have sequins covers for your masks. Don't sew sequins into an actual mask and then make them kind of pointless, but sequin covers for the mask, accessories that are bright and sparkly. The trends are comfy or structured. Comfy because we're not used to wearing the tight clothes perhaps that we used to wear and perhaps we don't have the same body that we used to wear those tight clothes in. But also structured is coming up. Corset is a hot search term just now and actually everything to do with the gothic aesthetic is getting huge. Some celebrities have been spotted in a more gothic look, I believe the Kardashians, and so the gothic trend is coming in again. See, um, see, a stopped clock is right twice a day. Ah, my camera battery's died, um, but the show must go on, so a slightly different setup. Let me know what you think of this. Is this better, worse, you don't really care, but let's get on with it. Another part of the getting together is parties. People who are not comfortable with clubs, pubs or restaurants might be looking for more intimate gatherings at home. So there's quite a lot they want to do there. First of all, decorating their house, especially things like the dining rooms and the sitting rooms, the places where people are going to be. So the wall decor, again a huge thing and also the tableware decor and things around cooking that might not have cooked before so dishes dishes to present at the table and recipes tutorials how to cook things these are going to be important Weddings are happening again, but they're still tending to be smaller. But this means less guests, more luxury. Another really big trend we're seeing is the reduction in buffets. People are not wanting to go and dig into the same bowl as 20 other people have been breathing over. Yeah, that sounds gross when I say it like that. So any ways to make cute little individual portions that people can go and pick up. So can you make little food safe boxes for people to pick up their single serving of food in? The styles, and now I know people are waiting for this one, the styles and aesthetics of the season. Firstly, cottagecore is still huge. It has been all year. If you've missed this, it's the cottage at the it's the cottage in the woods, as we mentioned for the full trends. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. But it's the cottage in the woods, the good life, the growing your own, the little imperfections, handmade. This is where macrame's coming from. But yeah, it's getting a little darker. So the witch at the end of the woods, and quite a lot of these other trends tie into this. But from cottage core things like mushrooms are still huge and adorable. So we already mentioned the gothic and it makes sense. When we mentioned in the fall about the cottage core becoming a bit more mystical, a bit more tarot cards, a bit more astrology, it sort of led into the fact that things were going to be getting a bit more gothic. And in the past wee while, the search for gothic wedding is on the up. And I do believe there's an Adams Family TV show coming up. And there's lots of supernatural type TV shows on the go. So that gothic theme, that gothic aesthetic is happening a bit more. How I wish my eyes weren't allergic to summer and I could wear my makeup again. Another thing that to my mind sits right in between this gothic and cottagecore is dark academia. If you have 
haven't heard this. I see this as a kind of mix between Oxford, Oxford Uni and the preppy American look. But we're talking old style academia, old style studying. So old books, leather and tweed from, from the old Victorian novels and stuff as well. So yes, that's come on from the Regency Corps, but there is a little dark side to it as well. But a lot of it is your tweed clothing, carrying some books, pretending to be a bit intellectual. And the final style that I love is grandparent chic. I saw this and I laughed so much. This is brilliant. But it's like, okay, we had mom jeans for long enough. Now it's grandparent stuff. So this is grandpa jumpers. This is vintage decor. Think what your favourite grandparent decorated the house like or what your imagination of the favourite grandparent. It It's more make-believe than what the actuality was like. And the time periods for this are 20s, 50s and 70s. So loving the roaring 20s stuff, but that was my grandparents. <laughs> um, and again, the 50s, that kitsch thing has been popular for so long and is still popular and I love it. And the 70s is probably more the grandparent style that many people are thinking of. But yeah, basically the aesthetic for this is not necessarily what your grandparents decorated like, but what the style trends, what people were aspiring for in that period. So a great boost for you vintage sellers out there if you have some Christmas decor from that time period. So just about every year, what are those big trends for Christmas? Firstly, on Etsy especially is personalised. Etsy is the place people come to for handmade personalised gifts. Etsy pushes personalised. If your item can be personalised, do it. <laughs> that, that's basically all I can say for that. It's a huge one. Obviously, Christmas decor is a massive search. It's a massive search right now. Um, people are going to be buying. They buy their decor. They buy their cards, their invites and everything a bit before the gifts. And people are starting searching for gifts right now. So they're looking for Christmas decor. I think especially it's been another long, dark year. They want to celebrate. Wreaths, trees, ornaments and lights, always big. Yes, the trends vary, but not everyone follows the trends. They have their own styles that they like and they might just want to be replacing a little something that was broken from another year. So, yeah, your lights or something might not be in the exact style of what is trending, but just creating that kind of decor is always popular. And colours that are always popular at Christmas, red and white. Red and white is always going to be a Christmas colour. And the blue and white, the icy, the two of these, always, always popular. Christmas jumpers, cosy things, wrapping up warm fires, always popular at Christmas. And along with that, all those scents and smells and baking, cinnamon or the pumpkin spice mix you talk about in the US. But in the UK, we talk about cinnamon and nutmeg, cloves all the wonderful spices, gingerbread men, gingerbread houses, hot drinks, hot chocolate. All these things are always big at this time of the year because it's getting cold. We want to be cozy. Stocking stuffers, those little gifts, especially now that people are going out to little parties and they want just a little thing to give people. But the little gift, the last minute gift. And gifts for men are always popular on Etsy because Etsy is populated by more women. So <laughs> more women are making things and more women are searching for gifts for people. So they're more likely to buy, be buying for men. So it is popular and an underutilized category. Not enough people make gifts for men. This was mentioned a couple of seasons ago by Etsy as well, that stuff for men is becoming more and more popular. So if something's unisex, maybe branded a little more towards the men as well. That might be an easier market to get into. And if you're a man and crafting, you are in a smaller percent. So get out there, show your face. This is where you can show off in your about section and everything yourself as the creator. And as we already mentioned, every year planning, self-help and fitness are huge because it's going to be new year, new me pretty soon. 
And what are those specific changes for 2021? Well, the colours are teal, gold, white, silver, and the Etsy colour of the year is sky blue. Craft kits are remaining huge after last year. It's not a all the time trend, but it's certainly a right now trend. Think of baking kits, recipes and tutorials, time consuming and relaxing kits. People want mindless activities. Color, adult coloring in books is huge just now. I just bought one. It's a little dark. I might be sharing things from that. Had fun. Also talking of silly kits and things. Did I just buy a Meccano dinosaur kit? Might have done. Daft things. They were designed for kids, but adults can enjoy a little bit of daftness and dinosaurs are still in there. A, a T-Rex with a Santa hat on is adorable. Knitting kits and tutorials, really good. Knitted hoods are a big trend this year and anything cosy and fluffy and wool and fabric-y is huge. So there will be some people looking to buy kits to be able to make the things. It's an activity that takes the time so it's mindless so you sit well it's mindless once you know what you're doing so you sit at it and you work on it for ages and for people who don't know what they're doing if you also sell the finished piece lots of people lots of crafters will start looking at something and go I could make that buy the kit figure out they can't make it go back to the original person and buy the finished piece from them so actually selling kits can get you double the sales because we all think we can do better than we can do. And tapestries are again popular and cross stitch but remember we said with the university decor tapestry is a big search term now the tapestries that are not that are coming up are not what i think of as tapestries but tapestry and cross stitch in the traditional form is also a really popular kit now remember with craft kits and things there might also be people wanting to learn things to eventually lead them into a potential side hustle. People are either losing their jobs or nervous they're going to lose their jobs or have had a really tough couple of years. So they're looking for a way to make their own income. So if you're making kits to teach people from a beginner some hobby that might be monetized in the future, there's another angle to look at. Show people how they can make the thing, where to get the supplies, how to do all the things to build up their own business. You're not creating more competition because you're there at the top of the pile. You're the expert on the subject and they're the newbies. Another great craft kit is memories and experiences together. Are there kits that you can do with other people? Even silly things for vouchers, say here's a here's a voucher for I'll give you a massage or something. Other trends in 2021 include the supporting the small businesses. I've seen a rise in people in the UK searching for in the UK, so rings in the UK. So people are wanting to buy it local. So it doesn't hurt in one of your tags, perhaps, to put your location. I know Etsy has other ways for people to filter by location, but buyers ain't so great. So if it's in the UK, stick in the UK. If you're made in America, say made in America. America or your state if people search for that. Made in Scotland or made in Ireland certainly doesn't help if it's the truth. And eco is still huge, sustainable, recyclable, reusable, <laughs> anything like that. So if you can focus in on any of those things. Oh, and yeah, masks. Masks are still going to be a thing this year. So can you make funny Christmas masks? Can you make Christmas party masks? Can you make masks that are different? Because people have a ton of masks, but maybe they want one. If you're selling handbags, can you make one to match accessories that match up? 